barbecue capital of the world and home of Elvis Presley. Please welcome your co-host, Bob Furness. A contact center job either finds you in a moment of need right. or you find it in a moment of need, right? Uh, I need a job. And, uh, and, and Or it could be that I'm, I'm working to an opportunity in a contact center. And from the tornado capital of the world, home of the Oklahoma Sooners, here's your co-host, Amos Tanuma. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Amos Tanuma, and I've got my co-host on, Bob Furness. Bob. Good morning, it Amos. Must be, it must be Friday morning. <laughs> it must be. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, this is the best part of my week. I know you've had a crazy week, and I, I'm always looking forward to ending the week um, on this note. So let's Absolutely. let's jump right in. Uh, I want to talk about the Forgotten Contact Center agent, um, which is, if you think about the landscape and all the things you and I do and the conversations we have, I, I feel like most of the conversations and most of the ask are not directly about the contact center agents that we talk all around them. Most projects about how do we improve the customer experience, the website and, and what have you. And case in point, if we think about the industry, all the big shops, think your consulting companies, your Deloitte, da, 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 PwC, da, yeah, they, they mention the employee, but let's face it, uh, most of the energy and most of the money is around the technology, even processes, uh, but not the, the employee. I'd love your thoughts on if you think that's a mistake and what your perspective is as we're all trying to improve um, the, the customer experience. Well, I, I think it's a mistake in that that's where the, the success lies, right? Mm. Um, because even if I have the most advanced chatbot out there and I'm, 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 I'm answering calls and uh, answering interactions and solving problems with the chatbot and all the things that I do. The reality is, at some point, it stops being successful, and I still have to talk to a live person. Yeah. So, so in reality, what we've done is, and we've talked about this a lot. We've we've scraped off all of the 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 easy stuff, or the technology continues to to own the easy stuff or the medium easy stuff right hard stuff still comes down to that interaction with that agent it still comes down to that person so when the accentures and the big guys don't focus on that piece although i i would imagine that somewhere deep in they the, do the they, area they talk about it but they're like not that. the center of the but, show but, right? it, but it's not the, it's not the center and even when you talk about customer experience um you know i i, I love that agent experience or c employee experience is the new customer experience yeah because we got to customer experience by by way of uh, of crm by way of customer sat scores by way of improving the sat and then we got to customer experience and we just sort of been living there that the journey and all of that. But if I if I do journey maps, who am I talking about? Right. I'm talking about the interaction with the with the with the employee, right? Yeah. And, and there's this mistake, I think, Bob, that there is a human at the other end of every interaction. It may not be live at the moment. In other words, even these knowledge bases, even these chatbots and what have you, um, you have these knowledge workers. There's this thought that it's an IT person that makes the chatbot or whatever it is work. They may configure it, but it's it's someone who has knowledge, right? Domain expertise about your customer service or sales or whatever you're doing, who is writing those articles. They're all part of this. And so I think part of what you're saying is this idea that we need to put the agent needs front and instead of doing things to them, right? Like it's like, let's give them more. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's like, Here's this new tool. You're going to learn to use it as opposed to reversing that and saying, let me put you at the center of the thing for once and think, what do you need and what makes more sense for you? And I'm doing this for you. And that's the change in the, in the paradigm. And so I don't want to make it sound as though agents don't have new tools and da, da, da. Yeah, the desktop is improving everywhere. I just think the focus of it is more about let me put this thing 
to you, um, as opposed to really most organizations aren't focused on, let me improve your experience. Well, I, I talked to someone yesterday that the, the catalyst for that interaction was we're trying to take cost out of our out of our um, service environment. Mm -hmm. So we're they're, they're stuck on that. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to improve the technology and we're going to be able to eliminate some full time employees. <laughs> right. And and the reality is. In my opinion, um, I need to improve the customer experience by improving the agent experience and cost will take care of itself, right? Um, a byproduct. It'll be, it, it'll a be byproduct. an organic byproduct. Yeah, I, I, but, but, but the reality is I probably have things that I would need those employees to do that are adding value that that the technology can do today, right? Um, and, and you mentioned knowledge workers. Um, how, how, how funny is it that you talk with a client and, and, and if you're out there in, in podcast land and this is you, I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, and you say, hey, I need a knowledge base. And the question back from the consulting company or the, the consultant is, so who's gonna curate and write, right. manage and handle those? Oh, well, the knowledge base, we're gonna, <laughs> we, we have an FAQ, we're just gonna put it in the knowledge base. Well, your knowledge base becomes unusable on day three because things changed, right? And so I, the, the answer, the question for me is how many people are going to maintain your knowledge base? And when you tell me zero or a part-time trainer, then I know you're really not talking about knowledge the way it's possible. You're talking about putting technology in it. And, and those are two very different things. So if we can bring the focus back to who's training the bot, who's training the knowledge management, who's supervising the 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 agents who's the person that's supporting the supervisor who has way too many things on their plate way too many things on their plate who who's supporting them and then ultimately who's supporting the the agent then it trickles back up i'm i'm not a trickle down economic theory guy <laughs> but i believe it can trickle up trickle into up, the yeah. customer yeah, yeah. yeah no, no no you're right and and listen and for those of you who are listening you can blame covid uh in 2020 but human to human interactions in the contact center grew substantially last year. Um, and you know, the projections of those who do this for a living is that it's gonna grow again in 2021, just the rate, rate of growth is gonna decelerate. So, so I'm assuming um, you know, with the vaccines and all of those things. So my, my point is we've been, this industry and others and everyone's been trying to eliminate agents throughout my career and uh, interactions keeps growing and they've added more channels. Oh yeah, yeah. And interactions keep growing and human human part is, is always going to be part of it. So let me, let me switch gears to my favorite part of the podcast every week. I may not be yours, which is I throw some random, random thing out here uh, for you. So in the news, I've been seeing lots of conversations about governmental agencies getting a religion about the customer experience. I mean, my post office, no kidding, has this giant banner about we care about your satisfaction. They got surveys and I'm, you know, obviously waiting in line for an hour uh, <laughs> during Christmas. But like, I, it was news to me that they care. But I, I am seeing more and more and more of this come out. And in all joking aside, I used to laugh at it before, but I'm now seeing them putting money to it and putting stuff to it. Is there a there there? It just seems to me it's just... Like what DMV is going to be in the top quadrant of customer satisfaction now? Is this is this where we're is this where we're headed? I'm not sure DMV is going to get to the top quartile, <laughs> but but we'll 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 dream we'll dream big. And and as far as the post office with the nonprofit that I have, I find myself standing in line at the post office every once in a while. And there's this one person. If she's there, I'll I'll let two people go in front of me just to get to her because she's the one who's living what's on the banner, right? <laughs> Um, and, and, and I feel like it's giving Amazon, uh, level, I mean, American express level kinds of service at the post office. So, so it's possible for that. Um, you know, I read something the other day about the government there, there is actually, um, I wrote this down. There is actually a, a requirement to improve 
the tracking and management of CX in the in government, federal government by 2030. So there's a mandate and a, uh, a, a, a bill that was passed that said that that has I to be improved. That. Okay. So, so there's focus on it because there's expected change, right? Interesting. So, okay. so much like what's happening in the, in the medical area where now hospitals are having to pay attention to not whether they got you out of the hospital, but whether they got you out of the hospital and you didn't come back, right? right? So, right. so okay. now there's a focus from the, from the government. Uh, and so the CX side of it is, um, is really important because it changes the paradigm of what you're looking for. So, so yeah, I, I think government entities are doing that. And, and the public sector marketplace is, is on fire with how do we improve? How do yeah. we get better at what we're doing? Um, and, you know, we built a chat bot for a, a DMV that um, had 60 people on hold and improved to the point that um, that the governor called out that they were they had a much better experience. He, he used the word experience, which, which, wow. which is which is just really cool that you've got a governor who's thinking about the experience of the citizen because that hasn't been the case before. That's that's that that's encouraging. I I thought I thought it was uh, it didn't have legs, but uh, I mean there's bills and and all of that. But that's 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 encouraging. I mean, I got to think that COVID exposed some of the flaws, right? Yeah. And that no no doubt about that. Unemployment offices. You heard all those horror stories in my state. I mean, there, you just you just couldn't get a hold of anyone. It was just it, it, it probably exposed, uh, and and hopefully that that forces. Uh, governmental agencies to do that. And I've seen plenty of stuff even in um, higher ed and in public sector, at, at the, at, like you said, in general. So I think that's a that's a net, net positive. So let's go to questions from the community. Um, I have a couple of them. Let me. One of them asks, what's the most important metric in the contact center? You and I have had this conversation plenty of times um, with the recording on or off. Uh, and then... Um, any advice for new operations management? So considering what we said at the beginning of the show, we would be remiss by not saying that the most important metric in your contact center is agent satisfaction. Amen. Amen. So are you are you surveying your agents? Do you mm. know whether they're happy or not? Uh, do you are, are you paying attention to turnover and figuring out what the turnover is caused by? Um, so agent satisfaction is handle time coming up next. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, but it, it's definitely something you should understand. Not sure your agent should have access to it, but we can, we can get into that in another show. So not uh, handle time is the headline here. It's well, like, not agent satisfaction, agent effort, you know, yeah. do you have the tools you need to support the customers in a way that is, is, is validates our brand, right? Yeah. Ask that question of your agents. They know. They know. Um, I, I think about a, a program, a project we did where we were at this quasi government agency and we were supporting, trying to change. They had 120 clicks to get to this expected interaction on where the package was. And, um, and when we set it in front of the agent for the first time uh, on UAT, he goes, Okay, I, I, I'm thinking about not retiring because this is this is changing my life. This is awesome. Well, again, it, it was about he knew how bad the interaction was. He knew what it was like trying to go through 120 clicks to get to the information that the customer thought he had at his fingertips. So, uh, you're, so you're, yeah, it, it's it's about the agent. You're, you're spot on and. And those of you who are listening and you guys have you know this better than than we do, which is that if you get agents in the room and ask them, what do you need? How can we make your lives better? They never talk about themselves. They're all, all they will keep telling you is get out of my way so I can serve the customer. Give me tools so I can serve the customer. It's not like you get agent if you do agent satisfaction, as as Bob's saying, the other tip I'm gonna give you is. I know you're listening to this saying your company has some company-wide survey that your the contacts gonna get lost in. That's not what Bob's talking about. And what's saying you do your own that's very focused on them because their job is very 
is unique enough from you know you know uh, those in marketing and those kind of, like focus on your people because when they give you feedback I remember I have to work hard to get them to say no no no, no. tell me what what will make you happy and the answer almost always and Bob tell me if you if you, if you think differently is always like Amos, if you want to make me happy, give me the tools, give me the processes, get out of my way, let me take care of my customers. And like, and that's that's so inspiring. So if you do that part well, I will be willing to bet money that matters to me that your CSAT scores will be through the roof because they're not, their agent sat is usually not dependent on you know your pizzas and all of that. They just want you tools, uh, processes. Give me, treat me like an adult. But give me tools and processes so I can take care of yep. your customers. Yeah. Well, and we would be remiss if we didn't say something about the metrics that drive success from a forecasting perspective. Yeah. And instead of handle time, I'm going to throw out available time. And what I mean by that is butts and seats. Um, how much time of the day that you were here and I was paying you to be here, are you where you're supposed to be taking care of my customers? And by the way, that has changed with work from home, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you had if you had a high percentage of that before, that may change. Uh, it may go down a little bit. But what you're accomplishing with your agents from home, look at the the as we said last week, look at the quality, look at the success of, of other parts of your of your organization and maybe take a hit in some of those cases. I mean, look, you know, the concept of a balanced scorecard has been around for a while, and that's part of what Bob is saying. Like, we just got to get out of it. I mean, I give Bob a hard time about handle time, and we're going to litigate that on one of these shows. But <laughs> we just we just need balance. You got to, like, you got to, you know, there's gives and takes here. I mean, I, I was talking to a, uh, an old client last week uh, on this whole work from home thing, and uh, one of the things I was telling them was that think about your recruiting radius. And I think you me you mentioned that, too. Like, you've gone from the best people in Paragold, Arkansas, which is where they they, they reside. And like, and, and, and by the way, I, I know Paragold, Arkansas very well, spent plenty of time there and all that. But if you can expand your recruiting radius to maybe not nationwide, but the rest of Arkansas or into Memphis, again, you're just getting a larger pool to choose from and it can only help you improve quality. So if you lose a little on your adherence, your availability, uh, available time, um, maybe you make it up in quality and those kinds of things. So yeah, Bob is really encouraging this sort of balanced view of things. So yep. Uh, yep. I think that's wise. Uh, we're running out of time. So speaking of wise, um, words of wisdom for you today. As people are listening, we like to leave folks with something for them to go think about that will help them um, in their careers and in their in their lives. You're first. Me? So for me today, it's about just do it, just move. What I mean by that is instead of talking about it, planning, start somewhere, like just start. Cause I, 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 I've been in plenty of conversations where whether it's a client or what have you, they wanna talk about it and find the perfect solution. It's like, just move, start somewhere. If you've heard some of the things we've said today and you're like, I can't make all of that change. Start somewhere, start today, do one little thing and it'll build and it will it'll make your contact center better. So mine is when you're on your way down the stairs, out of the bedroom, in the car, wherever you happen to be working in, in, in this crazy world we live in, ask yourself this question, what, what did you learn today that no one can ever take away from you? Mm. And what I mean by that is, what did you learn today that you can use in the future? Was it a way to coach? Was it something that you heard on a podcast? Was it an article that you read? Was it an interaction with an agent that you went, wow, that worked really well. I'm going to use that again. But what did you learn today that that you're going to use in the future? And if you if you can't answer that question, tomorrow has a new goal. I need mm. to learn something that I that I can that no one can ever take away from me. Wise words from Bob. Bob, thanks thanks for uh, doing this again. And uh, for those of you listening, we will be back next week. Please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. We have a video version. It'll be available on YouTube and on our site, uh, uh, contactcentershow.tv. Uh, and tell your friends and, and share our show um, and send us questions. Uh, send us questions. Uh, we're here to uh, make you guys better. So thank you all for listening. Thanks. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of the Contact Center Show. If you would like to join the conversation, please visit us 
at contactcenter.tv. That is contactcenter, all one word, dot TV. Or you can simply subscribe wherever you get your podcast. This has been a Beyond Production.